welcome back, here we go. Here we have our artboard set up with our frame layer created that's been perfectly sized and perfectly aligned to the artboard. So what can we do with it right now? Well, first I'd like for you to notice that the artboard itself is not a layer in this project. The only layer that we have is one layer called frame, and the only thing that's in this layer is the rectangle that we just drew. One thing I would like to draw your attention to is this eyeball right here. This eyeball, when it's visible, means that this particular layer called frame, which has our rectangle in it, is visible. Watch what happens when I turn this eyeball off. I'm going to click this eyeball. It's going to go away. Whoa, look what happened. Well, the only thing that's visible now is the artboard. Sure, I've got this black line right here, but that's the artboard. That's not actually my frame. I'm going to turn my frame back on here. There we go. Now the frame is back on, and there is the artboard. Okay, let me show you a few different things about some basic Illustrator operations that will help you out as we go along. First of all, I want to select this rectangle. I'm going to go back up here to my selection tool. I'm going to click it, and I'm going to select this rectangle. Now you'll notice that when I select that rectangle, it turns blue. Yours might turn a different color, because I want to direct your attention over here to the layers again, which as I keep saying are very important. Do you see this little blue square right here? That means that when I have something selected inside this frame layer, it will turn blue. It's possible to change what different color each layer turns when it is selected, uh, but when you create a layer, you get a random color. So yours might turn different colors, uh, but that's no problem. Here is uh, a selected rectangle. Now I want to draw your attention to this section over here. What I have here is a white square and I've got this black square here. This white square, as you can see, is called fill. That's what color fills up the inside of whatever object I have selected. And this right here, this thing called stroke, this is what color the edge, the outside of whatever object that I have selected is going to be. So as you see here, let me disable my selection just by clicking outside. Okay, I have this rectangle here, which is black with white on the inside, and as you can see, that matches up exactly with what's over here. I have white fill and I have black on the outside. Let's say, just for example, that I want to fill this rectangle with red. Well, all I have to do is double click on that fill and I get the color picker, which allows me to select just any number of colors that I want to select. I mean, Illustrator can create a vast number of colors. But if I just wanted to create a, a pure red, I'm just going to select up here on the, the color picker. This will be good enough, for example. If I want this color red, this is showing me what color the object currently is. This is showing me what color it's going to become. And as soon as I say OK, you will see what happens that the inside is now red. Now there's still, let me click out here to deselect so you can see there is still this very thin black line on my frame here and then a red interior which lines up with exactly what I've got here. What if I want to change the color of the the stroke on the outside? Well, I'm going to reselect that rectangle and then I'm going to go over here and touch the stroke. Now do you see what just happened? This stroke is now on top. Let me click the red again so you can see. Now see how the red is on top? Now see how the stroke is on top? Whichever one of those is on top is going to be the color that you're changing whenever you change a color. So right now if I go over here and I select um, green, notice what happened over here. My stroke is now green. You can't see it because this is a very thin line on this rectangle. And I'm going to click the selection tool and select off. And there is a very thin green line now around this rectangle. 
What if I want to uh, ensure that you're able to see it better? Well, what I need to do is increase the thickness of the line that surrounds this rectangle. So I'm going to select the rectangle, and then I'm going to go over here to my stroke palette. Okay, this is the stroke palette, you see. Again, one more reminder that if you don't see the stroke palette on your screen, you need to go up here to Window, and then scroll down to Stroke, and make sure there is a check mark by stroke, which will make it visible on your screen. Let's look at the stroke palette. I've got width right here. My width is set to only one point. Let's say I want to make a thicker line. Then I need to increase the thickness of the stroke. I need to increase the weight of the stroke over here on this palette. So I'm just going to increase uh, the stroke by pressing up here. You can specify a particular stroke by going in here and saying, hey, let's click 15. And you can see what's going on over here. The line around this rectangle is getting thicker and thicker. So this is how you control the stroke, the line around any particular object that you're trying to draw, and also the fill color of any particular object that you're trying to draw. You control it by the fill over here. You control it by the stroke. And then if you go over here to the stroke weight, you will be able to increase or decrease the thickness of the stroke around any particular object. While I'm here, I might as well point your attention toward the cap and corner. Now, I don't have a line, so cap won't do anything, but what I have is a rectangle that I have selected here, and I have two, three different options, rather, for what type of corner I would like for my rectangle to have. A miter join, a round join, or a bevel join. Okay, so now my default here is this miter join, and so you can see exactly what type of corner my rectangle has. But if I click here on the round join, pay close attention to what happens to the corner of that rectangle. Okay, it changed. It rounded it off. Now what about here with bevel join? Okay, now it's flat. That would probably be more dramatic the thicker that my stroke was, the weight of the stroke was around this object. So those are very easy ways to start to manipulate the colors of the objects on your map. I want to return this to the way that it was, so I'm going to go back here to the miter join on the corner, and I want to decrease the weight. Uh, let's go to, well, the original was 1. And then if I'm over here and I have the rectangle selected, a very, very easy way to get black, back to black and white is to go here. See this icon here in the corner? Default fill and stroke. That's white and black. I'm going to click right here, and then I can get back to exactly pure white and pure black. By the way, pure white and pure black are very important because I have been in situations where I have been doing some cartography and I thought that I was drawing with pure black, but I was drawing with actually a very, very, very dark shade of gray. I didn't notice as I was drawing the map, but when I went to print it off, I noticed that it didn't look as dark as I was expecting it to. You want to be sure, if you want something to be black or white, that it is pure black and pure white. And so using this little icon down here is a very easy way to make sure that you are getting back to very pure white and very jet black. So here I am with my one point weight rectangle for my frame again that is filled with white and is black on the outside. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start bumping up the weight of the rectangle. Excuse me, I didn't have it selected. Do you see what just happened there? When I don't have anything selected, I can start bumping up the weight, but nothing changes. So I need to go back over here and make sure I have my selection tool selected, and then select this rectangle so that it turns the color of the selection for whatever 
layer it's on and then when I adjust the weight I can see that it starts going up. I don't know, let me choose five points. That way I've got a nice bold line on the outside of my frame for my map. Now what color do I want to put on the inside? Well, what if you want no color? I don't know what you're mapping here. It's very important to take note of this icon, this red slash across this rectangle. This is called none, as you can see. So what happens if I say I want none here? Well, oh, nothing terribly exciting because the color of my page is white and so I just said that I want no interior color to this rectangle. So it didn't really do much, but it did actually change things because previously the rectangle was actually filled with a white color. Now it's actually filled with no color. Let me give you a, a more dramatic example right here. I'm going to go ahead and return this color right here, this is the last color that you used. So now I have a white uh, fill again, not just no fill. And then uh, I'll draw a new rectangle. Actually, I'll point out that if you drag across, you see this teeny, teeny, tiny little triangle here in the corner of this rectangle tool? That means that if you hold down and you drag out, you'll see some different options for the different shapes that you can create. Rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, stars, and flare are all inside this particular tool as long as you drag out. Hey, let's get crazy. Let's draw a uh, ellipse. So I'm going to drag out and now I have an ellipse and notice that it accepted the default weight and fill color of the previous selection that I had already made. Uh, let me go out here and say, hey, let me turn this our red color. Now you can tell that the rectangle is filled with red, a black border with a red color inside. Now let me click here to the ellipse and you can see that it is a black border with white inside. Now if I clicked fill none, you'll be able to tell the difference. Fill none. Now I have the same ellipse, no difference other than the fact that it's not filled with any particular color. So you can see the red that is underneath in that rectangle showing through. I'm going to go ahead and delete that rectangle and I'm going to go back out here and select my frame and then return it to uh, white. Depending on what you're mapping, sometimes I go ahead and turn the fill color of the frame, whatever default kind of color is going to be on the very bottom of the map that I'm making. For instance, if I'm trying to make a map of both land and water, uh, then what I'll do is go ahead and turn the frame, the interior fill of the frame, the color of the water. So I'm going to make sure that I have the frame selected here, this rectangle, and then I'm going to double click on the fill color and then I'm going to adjust this slider so that I come up with a nice uh, ocean color. How about that color blue? We're not being real specific on the color here and say OK. Now I've got the frame set up. I've got the color that I want for some kind of uh, ocean. One other thing on this subject before I go which goes back to working on layers. As I just showed you earlier Notice when I'm over here on the layers toolbar that I have frame here, my layers name, and I have this eyeball right here. When the eyeball is visible, that means that layer can be seen. Let me turn off the eyeball and you can see that I'm just back to the straight artboard. I'm going to turn that layer on again and you can see that I've got, it didn't go anywhere. I didn't delete it. I just turned it off visually. That can be very, very helpful as you start to create more complex maps. But there's also this square right here and it says toggles lock, editable when blank. And as you can see, it is blank right now. There's nothing that is in it. And that means that this layer, the frame, is editable. As I've been doing this entire lesson, I've been changing up all the different characteristics and all the different objects that are in this particular layer. What if I'm completely done? I've got this frame the way that I want it to be. Well, I'm going to click over here 
and you will see that there is a little lock icon that shows up. It is still visible, but the layer is now locked, and now it cannot be edited. I'm going to go back over here and get my select tool, and I'm going to try to select the layer of my frame. I want to edit this rectangle, but as you can see, I can't select it at all. That's because it's locked. Locking your layers is going to be an extremely effective way to make sure that you don't accidentally edit a layer that you don't mean to be editing. Whenever you're done with a layer, you can lock it, and that way you won't accidentally edit it later. So as you can see, I cannot select, I cannot manipulate or alter the frame layer at all right now because it is locked. If I want to edit the layer, then I will need to click here and unlock it. And now, look, I just selected the rectangle and I could move it around. I'm going to undo that and move it back and then lock it again. So that wraps up this lesson. We've definitely learned a lot. These are all extremely important skills and they're going to help us out as we continue to go along here to draw our map.